How's it going car people? It's Lucas here back with another car review presenting to you this 2016 Chrysler Town & Country Touring. As always, I will start it up, show you the engine, show you around the interior and the exterior of the car. So here's the key, typical Chrysler key, very Mercedes-Benz like, with your panic, unlock, lock, remote start, power trunk and power doors. So let's go ahead and get started. Upon unlocking, you do get welcome lights on the front, but not on the back, sadly. This town and country does come equipped with remote start. To activate it, just make sure the vehicle is locked and then hit the start button twice. In order to start, just insert the key into the ignition, twist it, and then flick to start. So, let's go ahead and cut on the headlights, fog lights, and hazards. The front two windows are fully automatic. So, let's go and check out the exterior of the Town & Country. The Chrysler Town & Country is a minivan manufactured by Chrysler from 1989 to 2016 across five generations. The first only ran in 1990. The second ran from 1991 to 1995. The third ran from 1996 to 2000. The fourth ran from 2001 to 2007, and the fifth and final generation ran from 2008 to 2016. Sales for the fifth generation Chrysler Town & Country started on August 16, 2007 for the 2008 model year. This generation is also only available as a long wheelbase model. Short wheelbase models were no longer available. The Town & Country is produced on the Chrysler RT platform and is related to the Chrysler Grand Voyager, the Dodge Grand Caravan, and the Volkswagen Rutan. By the way, Chrysler plans to restart production of the Grand Voyager in Europe this year, just not in the States. The Volkswagen Rutan already went out of production in 2014, but the Dodge Grand Caravan is still in production today. The Town & Country was replaced with the Chrysler Pacifica in 2017. The fifth generation Town & Country was available with six different trim levels. LX, Touring, S, Touring L, Limited, and Limited Platinum. There were also two special trim levels available. In 2014, there was the 30th Anniversary Edition, which celebrated 30 years of the minivan. The term minivan was invented in 1984, by the way. And in 2016, there was the 90th Anniversary Edition, which celebrated 90 years of Chrysler. The Town & Country was available with eight exterior color options and two interior color options. This one is finished in sandstone pearl coat with a black graystone leather interior. As far as engine options, it was available with a 3.3 liter overhead valve V6, a 3.6 liter Pentastar V6, a 3.8 liter overhead valve V6, a 4 liter single overhead cam V6, and a 2.8 liter diesel that was only available in Europe and the Philippines. The Pentastar, however, was not available until the 2011 model year, but that was the only engine option from then until the end of production. The other three engines offered in the States were only available from 2008 to 2010. As far as exterior amenities on this town and country, it has halogen headlights, a chrome accented front grille, front fog lights, body colored side mirrors and door handles, tinted rear windows, chrome trim underneath the windows, chrome strips on the bottom halves of the doors with Chrysler badging, LED tail lights, a rear wiper, a spoiler with third brake light, Chrysler, Town & Country, and Flex Fuel badging, rear license plate lights, a backup camera, a single exit exhaust, and 17-inch 10-spoke alloy wheels on Aspen Touring AS 225-65 R17 tires. As far as dimensions, length is 202.5 inches, width is 78.7 inches, height is 68.9 inches, with a 121.2-inch wheelbase. Curb weight is 4,652 pounds. 
This town and country is powered by a 3.6 liter, dual overhead cams, 24 valves, naturally aspirated Pentastar V6. It produces 283 horsepower at 6400 RPM and 260 pound-feet of torque at 4400 RPM. It is 0 to 60 in 8 seconds and has a top speed of around 140 miles an hour. With a 20 gallon fuel tank, it is estimated to get 17 miles per gallon city, 25 highway, and 20 combined. The town and country is front wheel drive. You get an 8-way power adjustable driver's seat, slide, height adjustment, recline, and 2-way lumbar adjustment. You do also get armrests for the driver and passenger. You do have carpet floor mats down below. The door panel houses soft touch materials along with piano black trim and a little bit of chrome trim, a chrome interior door handle, power windows, power locks, power mirrors, speaker, storage down below with bottle holder, another mini storage compartment right here. You'd have a stitched armrest as well. Over here, headlight switch and panel dim. All right. So let's go ahead and do a few revs and see how she sounds. This town and country comes with tri-zone automatic climate control. Over here you do have your fan speed, the display with the temperatures indicating what the zone is currently set to. You have AC, recycling, different zones, front and rear defrost, auto, temperature settings for the driver and passenger. You can sync all the zones. If you click this rear button, it'll now allow you to control the rear climate controls. You'd also have dual stage heated seats for the driver and passenger. Here's our infotainment screen which uh, when it's off, it only displays the time. Push this button to turn it on. And this right here is the volume knob as well. Currently we're on our radio. We do of course have our preset stations right over here. We have 12 of them in total. You can switch between AM, FM, satellite radio, do all that stuff. We do have voice recognition right here, Bluetooth phone controls over here to our media, back to our radio. This button right here, you can actually load a disc with it. And the screen actually tilts back, which is kind of cool. Over here to our menu, you can see system setup, you can set the display, turn off the screen completely like that. You can just touch it again to activate. Here are audio controls. You can view your files right here, your music pictures, and manage your hard drive, stuff like that. You also have a USB port right here and an auxiliary input. This town and country comes with the six-speed automatic transmission with a shifter located up on the dash. We do have manual shiftability, and upon putting it into reverse, we do have a backup camera with guidance lines. Our parking brake is right down here. Here we have our Chrysler analog clock. Over here, econ mode, hazards, the power to the 115 volt outlet out back, traction control, a little bit of storage, more storage with two 12 volt power outlets, cup holders, even more storage, also chrome accented. We'd have dual glove boxes in this vehicle. More of that piano black trim. We do get a four spoke design leather wrapped steering wheel with very tight power steering, aluminum trim around the spokes, very loud horn. We do have our display controls right over here for the gauge cluster, cruise control, and audio controls on the back of the wheel in typical Chrysler fashion. Wiper stock. Nothing on the right. The steering wheel is also manually tilting and telescoping. 
On the gauge cluster, we have our tachometer, engine temperature gauge, shift indicator, speedometer, fuel gauge, and over here, the display, which is currently indicating a compass outside temperature. Down below, we have our odometer. This one has 75,000 miles on it. Over here, we have the controls for the display with the back button right here. You can scroll through fuel economy, vehicle speed, and trip info, stuff like that. Then you click this button right here to view various uh, info. Pretty simple. Sun visor with vanity mirror and light. You have a built-in garage home link right here. Manually dimming rear view mirror. Your front interior lights. Sunglass container, which also doubles as a rear view mirror to keep track of the rear passengers. And you do have the buttons for your power rear doors, power trunk, as well as the uh, button to turn on and off the power rear doors. All right. So let's go ahead and shut it down. And we'll check out the back seat. This town and country is equipped with power sliding rear doors and you can open them three different ways. The first way is via the button inside the car. The second way is via the button on the key. And the third way is by just pulling on the handle. As you can see, all our materials do carry through on the seat. Here we have the two TVs for our rear entertainment system. Also, the second row of seats, they do stow away. And let me show you how that works. First things first, you wanna make sure to slide the driver's seat all the way forward, otherwise this is not going to work. The next step is to take out this floor mat right here and just put it somewhere on the ground. Then right here, there's this little tab which you can pull. It will catch itself there and hold itself in place. Then just pull this handle. Headrest will automatically go down and the seat will push itself right in. Then you can just pull this back. And there you go. You have successfully stowed your seat. And putting it back up is the reverse procedure. Just pull on the tab. And then just get it to hold in place. There we go. Just pull it. Clicks right into place. Just put it up put the headrest up, and there you go. Also, the areas underneath could also be used for storage, if the seats were not stowed away, that is. There you go. All right, so let's go ahead and hop inside. Now from the inside, you can close the door two different ways. There's a handle right here, and there's also the button right here. Just like that, the door will close. You do have sunshades for the second row passengers, as well as a bottle holder down below right there, even though you can't see it. I think that helps with the flash. There you go, there it is. Now I am six foot and half an inch, and this driver's seat is all the way back. The middle row of seats do not slide, unfortunately, but I still have an okay amount of leg room and a good amount of headroom as well. So as long as the seat was slid further forward, I'd be perfectly comfortable back here. Dual seat map pockets on both the seats. Obviously our TV screens back here, which are basically the same as the screen up front. We do have uh, three AV inputs and a USB input right here, an auxiliary. We have our buttons right over here, stuff like that. They're also adjustable, just like so. Up above, we have our rear climate controls. We do have our fan speed, temperature, and different zones as you can see right there. Storage compartment, and our rear interior light. Here's our air vents. We do have grip handles for the rear as well. All right, so that's it for the second row of seats. Let's go ahead and check out the third row of seats. We also have our headphones for our rear entertainment system right over here. To gain access to the third row of seats, pull that handle that I showed you earlier on. The seat will flip up like that, giving you a nice amount of access to the third row of seats. Just put the seat back. Honestly, I'd have to say the third row of seats is a little bit more spacious than the second row of seats if the driver's seat was all the way back, that is. As you can see, I have a decent amount of headroom, a little bit less headroom, but that's okay since the third row of seats does sit higher than the second row of seats. We do have coat hooks here for the rear. Here's our air vents for the third row of seats, our lights, more of these storage compartments right here. Another one up there. We also have cup holders, various storage compartments, 
as well as sunshades for the third row passengers as well. Not too bad. Also, there's a strap right here, which you can pull in case nobody would let you get out of the third row of seats. So let's go ahead and check out trunk space. The Town & Country does come with a power trunk and there are three different ways to open it, just like the sliding rear doors. The first way is via the button inside the car. The second way is with the button on the key fob. And the third way is via a handle right underneath the Town & Country logo, which would simply let you open the trunk manually. Now even behind the third row of seats, you do actually get a pretty nice amount of trunk space. You have tie-down hooks right over here, various storage compartments off to the side. The third row of seats does also fold, and the way you fold them down is by following the order of the straps. Number one, just folds down the headrest. Number two, folds down the entire seat back. And number three and four, you have to pull at the same time and the seat will just fall right in. This portion will obviously do exactly the same. And to put them back, just pull on that strap, and you pull on number two, and then just pull the seat right back. And just fold up the headrest, and you're good to go. Not bad. Also, one more interesting thing, the button to close the trunk, which would normally be up here, is actually right here in the Chrysler Town & Country, which is interesting. So all of that is going to conclude the review on the 2016 Chrysler Town & Country Touring. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like or a comment. Subscribe today if you haven't. I thank you all for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.